Hey, there it was. There it was. Was it good? How many of you guys went to camp? Come on, wasn't that good? Yes. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Yes. How many of you guys brought your Bibles tonight? Let me see them. Let me see. You brought a paper? Whoa. Look at this. What? Paper Bible. Yeah. This is back from my day. Look at that. Another one. Look at that. That means he uses it. Wow. See, he's got proof. All you other guys with your phones are like, uh, yeah, I read my Bible. You got a paper Bible too? Oh, and baby pictures. Oh, who's this, sweetie? Is this you? You carry your own baby pictures in your Bible? You need to be saved. You're like, I can't wait to read my Bible and look at pictures of me. Cool. All right. Well, hey, we got to, um, we're not doing, we're off a of brainstorm. Did you guys like that series? Was that all right? Did you guys get anything out of that? Good stuff. Good stuff. But um, tonight I want to talk about following. Following. Like, um, how many of you guys drive? Yeah, yeah, you're excited tonight, man. I love it. Too much Red Bull? Monsters, all right. You even crushed the can when you were done, right? You're like, monster! Awesome. Well, I don't know, like once you get to driving and you get kind of used to it, there's, a, there's like these, um, there's times when you're driving where, where you, you're, you're just driving and then all of a sudden you wake up. And you're like, how did I get here? Right? And it's like, I swear I do not remember the last five minutes of driving. Does anybody else relate with that? Right? Any, anybody that's, any drivers out there that have not experienced that? Right? You just kind of start dazing. Or there's the car in front of you and they're drunk. And so they do this. Or it's a woman. <laughs> Driver. No stereotypes. Or like a woman Asian driver. Dangerous. I say that because I've been, I've, been, I've been all over the world. I've seen all kinds of drivers. They just are typically the worst. I don't know. Right? But if you're following them, if you're following a car that's swerving, you will find yourself swerving. Isn't that weird? And dangerous. So when you get in the car, you should pray, Lord, don't let me get behind any Asian women drivers because I want to live. <laughs> hey, I love all people. I'm just making a point. Don't judge me. Yeah. Only God can judge me. Rest in peace, Tupac. <clears throat> Justin Bieber's a nice guy. He is saved, actually. Yeah, he is. He is. I know his pastor. He's, he's, he's good. He just... See, isn't that funny? How all you church kids can sit there and say how Justin Bieber is not saved because he's got a bunch of punks like you that love him when he's good and then hate him and talk smack and the camera's on him. You know why Justin Bieber's in the spot he's at and not you is because you couldn't even handle it. What would the world think if the camera was always on all your crap? Thanks. 
I'm just saying. So you must be really brave. You must be very holy. You must be very righteous if you're going to sit here and judge someone who's gone through what he's gone through. I'm just saying. Because he's got an incredible pastor that picks him up in his private jet and flies him places in his concert so that he can be with his pastor. I'm just saying. You don't know. Anyways, back to uh, off that rant. Back to following. I think every now and then, very often in our lives, we need to ask ourselves um, a very important question. Very often in our lives, we need to stop and say, what will I follow? You need to ask yourself, what will I follow? And then you need to write that down, and then you need to follow up with that question by asking yourself another question. What do I follow? Because it's really easy to say what I will follow, what I want to follow, but if we don't ask ourselves, what do I follow? You could get in trouble because usually what we want to follow, what we are following, don't really match up. They clash a little bit. Right? If we don't intentionally follow something or someone, we will end up unintentionally following the wrong thing. What we follow has to be very intentional. Okay? Especially as Christians. Children of God of, who are not of this place, right? We're, our, our residence is in heaven. But we live in a world that is not like our real home, right? And if we're not intentional about what we want to and what we are following, we will wake up five years down the road realizing that we've been following the Asian driver into the ditch. We've been following the wrong thing. Oh, I've been, I, I've been following, you know, you're driving along and you're following the blue minivan. We're heading to Seattle, okay. Following the blue minivan, okay. Well, here comes Satan in his blue minivan. And when you're not paying attention, they just whoop, right in front of you. And then you follow them off the exit to Yakima. And you get to Yakima, and you're like, well, how in the heck did I get to Yakima? This is boring. This is a bad place to be. I want to be in Seattle on, at, at, at the market, down on the water, looking at the weird people. <laughs> right? The guy that hasn't washed his hair in three years playing the ukulele. Awesome. So if we don't intentionally follow something or someone, we will end up unintentionally following the wrong thing. And this is important that we're in, 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 intentional about this because in our culture, there are so many things calling for us to follow him. Right? You guys have radio? Do you have internet? Do you have TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you pay attention, every 30 seconds, something is yelling at you, follow me! Then the next commercial, follow me! Their style. What style are you? What style are you going to follow? Are you a skater style? Are you the preppy style? Are you the, the, the skater, uh, zoomy style? Are you the wet seal style? Are you the Abercrombie and Finch style? Are you the, the American Eagle outdoorsman style? Right? Are you Hollister? It's like written all over everything. It's like Hollister down your pants, Hollister on your underwear, Hollister on your shirt. Right? We follow something, an identity, a music. How about music? Music usually makes or fits right into your style, right? Usually the, the person that's hanging out at a hardcore screamo concerts are not dressed in cowboy boots and a cowboy hat with a big cow head belt buckle. Yeah. Country screamo. Well, I lost my car! I lost my wife! Wah! Was that good? Can I join the worship team? Victory! Victory! Right?
right? Our cl- our, there's cliques, there's crowds that are calling you to follow, but usually your music, your style will de- determine what, what click or crowd that you guys are in, right, Ellie? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Come on, we got to ask yourself, are you going to, are you going to be a person who follows a job, a career? Are you going to follow the dollar signs? Are you going to follow a sport? Are you going to follow popularity? You're just going to do whatever it takes to be popular, to be known. Are you going to, are you going to follow friends? Come on, we all have TV shows, right? We're going to follow TV shows. How, we follow TV shows like, uh, um, Bones. What other TV shows out there you follow? Oh, I won't even say that. I'll save your embarrassment. Barbie. He, he, he loves Barbie movies. That's better than Teen Wolf. <clears throat> My gosh, you know, how many, you know how many Barbie movies I've watched over the years? Rapunzel? For days. Right? You got um, um, Modern Family. You have The Office. I don't even know what's on TV anymore. I don't really... I don't really watch TV much anymore. But you have those shows, you're like, oh, I follow. Switched at birth. Whatever. But then you got social media. Social media. Come on, there's all type of people to follow on Twitter. Right? How many of you guys have a Twitter account? Raise your hand if you have a Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, raise your hand. Okay, now, um, we have Twitter, there's Facebook. Listen up, guys, there's lots of talking. You can talk when I'm done. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Snapchat, Pinterest, Etsy, YouTube, Flickr, Vine, Tumblr, Google+. Plus. I don't know who uses Google+. Plus. <laughs> Will you be in my circle? No, that's creepy. Get out of my circle. I'll put you in multiple circles. You can be my friend, my family, my relative. MySpace, does it exist anymore? Wow. Yeah, and Instagram, right? Instagrammers out there? You're going to gram instantly. Right? And every day, you guys get on your phone when you wake up to see who liked, who commented, and how many people are following you. You gonna put? I'll pose for Instagram. Yes, that's awesome. The mad preacher. <laughs> right on, on Twitter, you 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 get on to see who's liked, who's retweeted, and who how many people are following you. And the, in social media, what is the what's the trick, right? If you want you want to have followers, you want people to see what you're taking pictures of. You want people to see what you had for dinner. Right? You want, to, you want people to see what you look like with your shirt up in front of the bathroom mirror at the mall. Boys, girls do not like that. And make sure that the toilet's flush before you take a picture in front of the mirror. Because they're not looking at your abs, they're looking at the turd floating in the toilet that you forgot to flush, you sick, sick person. Follow, follow, follow. I'm going to follow them, and I'm going to follow them, and I'm going to follow them, and then I'm going to pray that they follow me back. Right? Social media has messed up our view of what it means to follow. I think social media has messed up our view of what it means to really follow. Following is not just peeking through a screen into someone's life. Following is not just entertainment. Following is not just to see or hear other people's opinion. Following is not just so that you can see the crazy things that they say so that you can judge them. Following is is not just a waste of time when you're in the bathroom. You know how boring going to the bathroom was a couple years ago before smartphones? (laughs) Now it's like, 
wow, where's an hour and a half gone? <laughs> I can't feel my legs. <laughs> Come on, if you have your Bible, go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. You guys can throw it up on the screen if you've got it. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through uh, 20. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Say two brothers. Two bros. Simon, who is called Peter. I don't understand that. Just call. Well, what do you want to call him? I like Simon, but we'll call him Peter. I guess, never mind. We have a son who we named Gabriel, but we call him Cash. So, <laughs> Simon Peter, fisherman. And, his, and Andrew, his brother. See, Andrew was lame. He just got one name. Andrew, yeah, that's good. Cast, so, okay. He saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishermen or fishers of men. Or fishermen. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Now, I need you guys to track with me here for a few, for a few minutes. When Jesus, this is the first, these are the first disciples. These are the first people that he's, that he's calling to be disciples. And he walks up to these two people that were brothers and they were, they were fishermen. They were in the fishing business. They had the boats, they had the nets, they knew what they were doing. They, it, they, it probably, you know, uh, Simon, Peter, and Andrew fishing company incorporated. They're out there throwing their nets into the water. And Jesus, who they've never met before, walking on the sand, yells at them and says, Hey, you guys, bros, follow me. And I will make you fisher of men. What? We're fisher of fish. That's weird. But it says they immediately left their nets and followed him. When Jesus says, follow me, this word here, in its original form, means this word follow means come now and come hither with an exclamation point. Come now. He wasn't like, hey guys, want to follow me? Hey, fishermen, if you want to follow me, I will make you fisher of men. That is creepy. The next several, the next times that you see Jesus in the, in the scriptures that we're going to read, and he says follow, or the word followed, it means something completely different. It has a different, a different meaning. It has a different interpretation than when he says follow that we're going to talk about in the next verse. But it says, but this word follow means to join him as his attendant to accompany him, to join one as a disciple, become or be his disciple inside with his party. Same word, two different meanings. The first one was, come now. They're like dropping their nets. They're like, we're going to come now. We're, we're going to come hither. Shakespeare Jesus. Come hither. Listen, God has called you all to, to follow him just like he did the fishermen. Every single one of us, he is called to follow just like the fishermen. It's a, it is a command. You don't have to ask for it. You don't want it. You might not even want it, but that's too bad because Jesus has called you to follow him. Every single one of you, he, he has said, come hither. Come now. Nothing you can do about it. It's been done. It's been said. But you have to make the choice to follow. The other word, follow. Number 190. It is up to you to be a follower. It's up to you to join him. It's up to you to accompany him. It's up to you to become a disciple. He cannot make you accompany him. 
He cannot make you become his disciple. So there's all these things in our world that, that is calling us to, to follow. There's so many different religions. There's so many cults. There's so many different opinions out there um, screaming for you to follow. But why, why follow God besides the obvious? He is real. <laughs> He's not a joke. He's not made up right? If you got your Bibles or throw it up on the screen, John 12, 26. If you're taking notes, just write down the verses because I'm just going to start reading them. John, John 12, 26, it says, if anyone serves me, this word serves here means like to wait upon. Like you go to Red Robin and then, then the little lady comes up and she's like, would you like something to drink? Uh, yeah, I'll take some lemon and water. Okay. She's serving me. This word means a, like a server, like, a, like your red robin server. And, a, and it's like, are we a good server or are we like a server from Sherry's? See, I know, right? You're like, hey, lady, I know you're almost dead, but I'm in here for an hour and I want my pie shake. <laughs> Hurry up. Is, is that what Jesus is like with us? Maybe some of us. But it means it's like a server. If anybody serves me, he must continue to follow me, to cleave steadfastly to me, to conform wholly to my example in living, and if, uh, if need be, in dying. Okay. And wherever I am, there will be my servant, or there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. That's cool. All that cool stuff. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna serve me, you're gonna be with me, you're gonna you're gonna cling to me, you're gonna accompany me, and if you need to, you will die for me. That sounds pretty exciting. You mean I can die? Yes. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. You get honor from the Father. You get honor from God. You get honor from the Father. Right? There's, there's, so many, there's so many things in life that we want honor from, right? We want honor in our classes. We want to make the honor roll. We want to graduate with honors. Right? When we're on the field, we want our coach to um, give us honor by putting this on um, first string. How many of you guys want honor from your parents? You know why teenage years are, are usually, not everyone, but usually are not easy? And it just seems like you and your parents are just like, just rams, just smashing heads together. It's because you want honor, but you don't want to honor. Huh? He just said honor twice in the same sentence. I don't get it. You want honor from your parents, right? You want trust from your parents, yet you don't honor. You don't give them any reason to trust you. You don't give them any reason to honor thouest. Uh-oh, I didn't know he was going to talk about this at church. If you want honor from your parents, maybe you should honor them. It works. If you want honor from God, then you need to first follow him, right? You need to first serve him, and then honor is the reward. And that word actually, it means reward. <laughs> the word honor means reward. Um, the Father will reward you to prize the, the, that God, when we serve and we follow Jesus, God, 
Are you guys getting this? He's, he rewards you. He's, he, he, you're like his prize. Um, it means to fix the value. It doesn't matter what circumstance you're in. There's, you're, you're, you're worth a fixed value. For the value of something that belongs to oneself. You guys ever have a thing that, that is worth nothing, but to you, it's worth everything? Right? That little necklace that grandma gave you that was, you know, worth a couple hundred bucks, and you're like, I wouldn't sell it for a thousand. What? You're crazy. I'll give you 200. No, you're crazy. I want a thousand. Why? Because there's a fixed value on that object. Do you guys get this? Man, I just feel worthless. Are you serving Jesus? Because you're priceless to the guy who created everything. That's amazing. But here's a trick. You can't just say one day, go up and go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow Jesus to the day I die. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking my sin. Thank you for heaven. And then walk away. Following Jesus is a daily decision. Everybody say daily. daily. Decision. What do you mean, Pastor Seth, daily decision? Brushing your teeth is a daily decision, right? You wake up, you gag reflex on your own breath, and you decide, am I going to brush my teeth today or kill everybody in my path? (laughs) You decide daily to brush your teeth, right? Right? Putting on clean underwear. It's a daily decision. Right? Some of you guys are like, what? It is? (laughs) Yes. You can decide every day to just put on a clean pair without sniffing them. Yeah, those are good. <laughs> like, I don't know, man, my butt just itches. Yeah, change your underwear every day. <laughs> butt fungus is real, people. And you decide every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> Right? Wearing deodorant, a daily decision. Junior hires, I, I strongly accept, uh, I strongly um, <laughs> suggest, thank you, that every morning, take a shower first. even if you don't take a shower, that's why they made Axe. Because Axe just kills everything. It's like Lysol that smells good. It's like, why shower? I got this. Yeah, I've got an, uh, my eight-year-old. He turned eight. He was like all into acts. I don't know if he saw a commercial where all the girls start running towards him, or he really thinks that it smells good. But it's like I don't need to brush my teeth. I got acts. <sighs> Chicks are gonna be running to my mouth. Right? Is this make, am I making the point? Following Jesus is a daily decision. But it's more important than showering. It's more important than brushing your teeth, clean underwear. Every morning, you get to make a decision. Am I going to follow Jesus or am I going to follow someone else? Am I going to follow myself? Am I going to follow my pride? Am I going to follow my own ideals, my own thoughts? Am I going to follow my boyfriend, my girlfriend? Am I going to follow my crazy aunt? Am I going to follow the person I follow on Twitter? Every single day we have to decide, am I going to follow Jesus today? 
every day. Because every day you have the choice to respond to the come now with the I'm going to accompany you follow. That's good stuff. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to all, if any person wills, I love it. If any person wills, which means if they decide, if any person decides to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests, refuse and give up himself and take up his cross daily and follow me, become my disciple, cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to my example in living and in need be, in dying also. Great, there it is again. It's like warning, follow me, you might die. That's what's so exciting about going on a mission trip to the Philippines because every time I take a team over there, in the back of my head I think, this could be the last time I see my family. Because I'm going into an area that has radicals that hate me because of the God who's in me. There's an opportunity that I might die where I'm going. Ticket, please. Yes, ma'am. Deny himself daily take up a cross. What does this mean? What is denying yourself? It means take your eyes off yourself. We're so used to it with all the selfies. <laughs> right? It's taking your eyes off yourself daily. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Daily, we have to decide, we have to choose to deny, deny ourselves. Daily, we have to choose to follow. Daily, we need to choose to take up our cross. Deny yourself is to take your eyes off yourself. It means to forget about one's interest for the sake of the kingdom. It's like what the disciples did when they dropped their nets and they walked away from everything that they were. They were fishermen. And Jesus said, come, and they followed, they accompanied him, and they chose to, to leave their self-interests on the ocean shore and accompany Jesus. Forget about one's interests for the sake of the kingdom. It means to put God first. It means living out your salvation and your, your baptism. You are no longer your own, right? Right? That's what we, that's pretty much our salvation prayers. I'm not my own. You died for me, so now I'm going to live for you. I was free, but now I'm your bond servant. If you are dead to self and alive only because of him and through him, right? That's what our baptism is all about. That's what our, baptize, our baptism represents when people get in that, that little hot tub and they, and they go underwater. It's a representation of Jesus being buried and coming back up alive. Every day we decide, are we going to live that out? Am I going to walk away from my baptism? Am I going to walk away from my commitment to Jesus? Because I don't feel like it? Because it's not popular? Take up his cross and follow me. What? I got a cross? Not what you wear, not the one you got from Buckle. Right? Not the one from Claire's. Listen to this. Take up your cross and follow me involves embracing and identifying with Jesus' kingdom message to the point of belief, of being willing to suffer gruesome execution for it. Physically or with words. In Jesus' time, crucifixion, which was the Romans' form of capital punishment, that was what, what, that's what they did. This, it, was the, it was the common, common thing. It was reserved for criminals, foreigners, and slaves. 
Crucifixion was a particularly undesirable way to die. You think? I'm like, uh, just give me the gas. No, you get the cross. No, I don't want to be stripped naked, hang, have nails shoved in my wrists and my ankles and hang there until I die. Just, you know, give me the needle. Give me the chair. Hang me. Anything. Not the cross. It was the undesirable way to die. The condemned person had to carry his, his or her own cross or in, or in certain situ, in instances, uh, just the cross beam, which was attached to the upright, which made the cross at the crucifixion site. Since this form of execution was so common, Jesus in, employed it repeatedly as a metaphor for discipleship. Because a person must be willing to undergo even the, the, the heinous form of execution for the sake of Jesus and his kingdom message. That's insane. And we're like, I don't know if I want to follow him because I might lose a friend. I don't know if I want to post about God on my Facebook because I might lose followers. Oh, I, might offend, I might offend my atheist friend. Slap yourself. You're, you're missing out on honor from the Father. Luke 9, 24. Forever who would preserve his life and save it will lose it and destroy it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he will preserve it and save it from the penalty of eternal death. Well, see, what will you profit to keep your life? To keep your life, what you want, what you desire, what your flesh wants. Because that's what you're exchanging for his life. In First Timothy here, this word follow means to run after, to press on. Of one who is in a race run swiftly to reach the goal, right? You get in a race, and the, the, the goal is to get to the goal as fast as possible. Why? Because you're, you're in a race. You don't get in a race and just, like, skip. Or walk in circles, or, or go off course. Because why? You, you're disqualified. No, you, you run. To press on, to pursue, to pursue in a hostile manner. Right? You see that little, uh, that meme? Or that picture on uh, Facebook that goes around and it's got that little girl running with the chicken. The, the picture with the, like the, she's got the chicken in her hand. You know what I'm talking about? She kind of looks like honey boo boo. But she's like running in a race and she's like, and they put like all kinds of funny things in her hand and She's running hostile. She, in a hostile manner, she's running with the chicken wing or whatever is in her hand. Suffer persecution on account of to seek eagerly. Can you imagine if we sought God as eager as we sought things on Google? I've got to find this out. <sighs> got to search, 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 search. What's the song? What's the, what's the lyrics of this song? What's that? What's it? Well, what would happen if we seeked God? Who knows? It's a mystery. Almost done. First Timothy 6.11 But as for you, O man of God, flee from all these things, aim at and follow or pursue righteousness. Right, which is right standing with God and, and true godliness. Godliness. Pursue righteousness, godliness. Which is the loving fear of God and being Christ-like. Uh, uh, pursue faith, love, patience, and a gentle heart. That's saying don't flee the wrong stuff because it's going to lead you astray. Don't, don't pursue, don't follow things that are unrighteous, that are ungodly, that are not of faith, not of love. 
that are quick and not patient. They're not gentle to heart. Saying those are the things that you need to pursue. Those are the things that you need to follow or else you're going to be led astray. And all those things look like Jesus. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Shun youthful lust and free from them. Flee, not free. Shun your immature lusts. It's not all sexual. Every, you know, you say lust and everybody's like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. It's immature. Youth, youthful is immature. Shun, throw to the side your immature lust and flee from them and aim at and follow, pursue righteousness. <laughs> Faith, love, peace, fellowship with Christians. Not be like talking all smack about him. He's not a Christian. Like where we started the service. Flee from that stuff. See, guys, we follow, we follow, uh, we follow Nicki Minaj, Jason Aldean. You follow the Kardashians. Justin Bieber, obviously not. You follow Russell Wilson, LeBron James, your favorite actor or actress. You follow your favorite comedian. You follow your favorite bands. You, you follow your favorite movie stars. You, you follow the hottest guy. You follow the hottest girl. You follow your favorite pastor, your favorite speaker. You follow your friends, but are you following Jesus? We follow these people. We retweet. We tweet to them hoping that they're going to retweet or tweet back. Oh, my gosh. But are we following Jesus? Because none of it, none of the other stuff is going to matter. What do I follow? What will I follow? It costs more than clicking a button to follow Jesus. Some of you guys are like, oh yeah, I'm friends with Jesus on Facebook. It's Jesus, it's not Jesus. Jesus was Middle Eastern, not Hispanic. Oh. Jesus liked hummus, not refried beans. It costs more than clicking a button, guys. It costs you everything. It costs you everything. But if we run and pursue and follow Jesus, we follow righteousness, we follow right living, we conform to his will, we pursue after faith, love, peace, God living, all the other stuff that we need, that we get dis distracted by, it all shows up. But you're winning instead of losing. Does this make sense tonight? Did it get you thinking tonight? Call us pray. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for your word. God, I thank you that it lifts us up, that it brings life. God, I just pray that, uh, that something was said tonight, God, that your spirit was able to do a work in the hearts of people to, in this place. God, that we would look at, at this word differently. God, that we would look at our life differently, that we would look at the, uh, the course that we're walking differently, that we would have the, the guts to ask ourselves, what are we following? Come on, tonight, if there's anybody here that um, maybe, maybe you, your, your heart was like, I'm going to follow Jesus. You've said the prayer. You've, you've, you've met with the prayer partner. You've, you're doing this. But if you really examine it and be real with yourself, you're thinking, man, maybe I'm not quite ready, really on the path 
Maybe I was following the wrong, the wrong thing. I'm off course. Do you know that tonight you can leave this place knowing that you're back in right standing, that you're following, you're pursuing righteousness again? Maybe you're here tonight and you've never even heard this before. Maybe you've had no clue that there was an option to follow God. Tonight you can leave this place knowing that you're on the right path. Do you know that there is a there is a heaven and there is a hell? It's just reality. It's in the Bible. I'm not making it up. I'm not It's it's true. And when we are people that do not follow Jesus and our life ends on earth, we we still have eternity, which is a very long 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 time. And it's going to suck or it's going to be really cool. If we're following Jesus, if we are followers of Jesus, life after death is gonna be pretty awesome because there's this place called heaven and it's amazing. It's got streets of gold, it's got it's got a it's got a gate of pearl. The presence of God is intense. That's where I'm going. Because I I, I choose to follow God. I I I I realize that without Jesus I am nothing. Without him dying on the cross for my sins. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can, that can't knock on enough doors. I can't hand out enough flyers. I can't save enough whales. I can't recycle enough to get into heaven because Jesus is the way, the truth. But then on the flip side, there's hell and it sucks. It's hot. It's, 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 we're, for eternity, the Bible says that they're tormented. That doesn't sound fun. It doesn't sound good. It's worth giving my life up. If you're here tonight and you you just need to say, you know what, Pastor, tonight I just need to make sure my life's right. I, I really need to start following Jesus again. Or you're here and you say, you know, I've never really followed Jesus, but there's just something inside of me that's tugging. That's I got the butterflies in my in my gut, and I just I need to I need to follow. I need to choose Jesus. Is that anybody in this place? Can you just raise your hand at me. And those two things, because I just want to make sure that you're. You're good that you leave this place with what you need. Is there anybody? It's your choice. God has said, come now. It's up to us. It's up to you individually to say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow. God, we just thank you for tonight, everything that was accomplished in Jesus' name. If you got something, will you say amen?